Good evening, everybody. Tonight, I'd like to start the presentation with a short story. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there was a tropical island. It was full of lush trees and tropical birds. And when the first settlers arrived on this island, it must have seemed like paradise. So much so that the population flourished. And they developed very advanced technology and had lots of spare time in which they were able to build elaborate stone statues. But gradually, the trees started to disappear, cut down to make way for farming, or to make tools to make the elaborate carvings, or some people believe by the growing rat population, which was inadvertently introduced to the island by the settlers. With the trees gone, the people had um, no tools to do their carving, and the fertile soil started to gradually erode. They'd also cut down all the trees so they couldn't make any more boats in order to escape the island, so they were stranded. Ultimately, a war-based culture arose as the people struggled and fought to control the dwindling resources which were left on the planet. As the war-based culture arose, the people started to knock down the statues and in 1722, when the Dutch explorer, Jacob Rogovin, discovered the islanders on Easter Day, he saw a population that were a shadow of the former self. War had caused them to topple the statues, and evidence later showed that the people had resorted to cannibalism in order to survive. Now, this history of Easter Island is a well-known example of how human beings are capable of using up their resources and destroying their environment, and is a stark warning of our own looming environmental crisis. Since the 1970s, we've started to use up more resources than we can sustain on the planet. It's estimated that we would now require 1.5 planet Earths in order to sustain our current consumption levels. So for me, when we think about short-termism, it's not really so much about the business and how we generate businesses, it's how we live our lives and how our children will live our lives. And for me, short-termism, should we kick the habit? Well, we're kicking up an environmental deficit with no end in sight. If we continue to consume things the way we're going, within 40 years, the rainforests will be gone, our oil reserves will be used up, and within 50 years, there'll be no fish left in the ocean. So for me, we definitely should think about kicking the short-term habits. The real question that we should be asking is as a race, can we kick the habit before it's too late? Or is history doomed to repeat itself only this time on an environmental scale? Now, when we talk about kicking the habits, the charity ASH.org, set up by the Royal College of Physicians, is a charity set up to help people kick the habit of smoking. And they estimate around 66% of smokers in the UK would like to kick the smoking habit. Now, it's no wonder, considering about 100,000 people die every year in the UK from smoking-related diseases. It seems ridiculous that in today's modern age, people would undertake an activity that they know could kill them. But there are still 10 million smokers in the UK. That's around a sixth of the UK population. So what has this to do with short-termism? Well, think about our global environment. As already touched upon, we know that in the long term, we're destroying our planet. And to make matters worse, we're encouraged down this route of self-destruction by big businesses and governments telling us to buy more stuff, borrow if you can't afford it, and then just replace it in six months' time anyway. I mean, how many of you people have fallen into the trap of the iPhones? You have to keep getting a new one every year. Business schools around the globe are teaching people that growth is the only way to succeed, using economic principles developed during the Industrial Revolution when natural resources were seemingly boundless. And CEOs are incentivised by share price growth with less concern on environmental sustainability and 
um, well-being of people. This is a fact that was highlighted in a recent survey by PricewaterhouseCooper in which um, global warming did not even register on their survey due to a previous lack of interest from CEOs. However, interestingly enough, they were more interested and their top concern was increased regulation, which was stifling their ability to grow. It seems to me they're kind of missing the point here. The consequences are huge inequalities in which 20% of the adult population now own over 94% of global household wealth. This is clearly something that is unsustainable for us and whilst big businesses may think now its short term growth and share price is, is valuable, what will we do when we've used up all the natural resources? I think we're still a few years away from getting onto Mars and exploiting that. So, to illustrate the point of short term thinking, I brought a little prop along tonight. A chocolate cake. Now it does look good and I did think I'm quite hungry by now and it's quite late and I could eat the lot. However, if I was greedy and I ate the lot, I'm unlikely to really get any benefit and I'll probably end up feeling sick afterwards. Alternatively, I could cut it up into little slices and I could have a slice every day. However, as we know from basic economics, the time value of chocolate cake, well, it's going to diminish. So in the next few days, the sponge will dry out and eventually I might throw away the last few slices because it's not really going to taste very nice after that. Now, let's take a radical view. I could cut this into little slices and at the end of this presentation, I could share it out among all your audience here tonight. Now I get the benefit of having one slice and tasting it and I also get the benefit of, of having conversations with people that I may not otherwise have the opportunity to talk with. You might give me feedback on my presentation and maybe you'll have some topics that you would like to discuss with me based on what I've covered here. Overall, you guys, maybe some of you are hungry, we'll get that, and maybe you'll return the favour to me in the future and offer me a slice of cake when I'm hungry. But in general, the overall benefit to society will be better. Now this is something that's based on a steady state economy. It's where we move away from just thinking about growth and profit and growth and profit and start thinking about the social well-being of everyone and using our resources so that everybody is, is equal. Now think back to the world of smoking. In the past, cigarettes were recommended by doctors, advertised by future presidents, you could even get cigarettes that claimed they could help your asthma. Now we think, how could people be so stupid to believe this? But are we not guilty of the same thing with our belief that continuous growth is not only good for us, but essential to maintain our economy? In generations to come, will they look back at our banking crisis with disbelief that we could be so stupid to believe that perpetual debt is good for us and good for our businesses? Now here's a challenge for you. Think about an economy based on sustainability. It's called a steady state economy. And there's a growing movement of people who are prepared to challenge the greedy capitalists and take the fight to the government and say that we're not prepared to allow our economy and our environment to be destroyed irre irreversibly so that the richest 85 people can continue to own more wealth than half the world population. Now, growing anti-smoking initiatives have managed to drive a huge reduction in smoking over the past 60 years. This shows that with social interaction and, government, and pressure onto the government, we can start to reduce bad habits. This gives us hope that in the future, we can start to kick our short-term habit. If there is the social and the political will to do this. Now, there is a book that I'd like to highlight it's written by Rob Dietz and Darrell O'Neill called Enough is Enough and in it they highlight seven policies that could be implemented to enable this steady state economy to start to develop. And because this is a PowerPoint presentation, I did think I'd have to put some bullet points up. <laughs> but I'm not going to go through them in great detail. What I would say is challenge yourself and move away from just thinking that growth is the only way to undertake business and think about the bigger picture and the benefit 
for the longer term. Failure to act on this? Well, if history has anything to go by, the history of Easter Island, well, I hope you like the taste of human flesh. But luckily for us tonight, in the short term, we have chocolate cake. Thank you very much.